Hey. Hey, you. Can you see me? I bet you thought it was do with Dan. Nope. Chuck Testa. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, do with Dan. And we're back in the shop. As you can see behind me, this is not my car. We're working on Laura's car. This is her 2016 M235i, and uh, it's broken. I mean, like, kinda. So in this car is an N55 BMW motor, very similar to the one that I had in my old BMW, my uh, 335i back in the day. That was an N54, very similar platforms. The N55 is like the upgraded. You know, you can sit here and debate that on forums all day long, and I won't. But yeah, so she's had a problem, and which is a common issue on these cars, apparently. She called me on the way home from jujitsu one day, saying, and that the car was acting a little funny. It wasn't letting her go above 70 miles an hour. It's a BMW. They do these things. You put bad gas in it, they'll do it. She revs it up a little bit. I listen to it and I notice that something sounds different. Pop the hood. I find that her charge pipe, hear it rattling. There's, there's gaps, there's cracks and uh, it is done. I, for the life of me, can't figure out why you would do that. It's literally hot air coming directly from the engine. So I reached out to some good friends of mine, ECS Tuning. They make a lot of European parts from BMWs, Mercedes, and a bunch of other brands, and they make really awesome upgraded parts for this car. So I was like, hey, and they're like, we got you, dude. Specifically you, Jocelyn, much appreciated. You are the GOAT. Thank you so much for getting this sent out in a timely fashion so we can get Laura's car up and running again. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate this, Jocelyn. You are, in fact, the best. I would like everybody in the comments to say thank you Jocelyn and thank you ECS Tuning. Do it. It's all I ask. And for you to clean those water bottles out of your room. It's been two years. Two years since you've cleaned those water bottles out of your room. There's too, there's too many, all right? There's too many. Behind the dresser? The TV? Underneath the bed? What's wrong with you? Just clean them up. It'd take you less than 10 minutes. Get a garbage bag, go to the bathroom, empty them out. The water's not good by now. That's your fault, not mine. Crush them up and take them to the recycling center. Just do it. So I need you to clean your water bottles and say thank you, Jocelyn, all right? So this looks like a pretty simple and straightforward install. I've looked up a couple of videos, which this is not a perfect how-to install video. Do not watch this video thinking it's gonna be a perfect how-to install. There's much better people out there. Right now, also, my buddy Captain is on the way. You guys remember Captain, he helped us install the uh, airbag suspension for the Scion TC. And while I think I can get this by myself, it looks very straightforward and simple, but that's usually the ones that get you, right? So we're gonna find out. And despite his condition, which we will talk about, he's on the way to help me, which is very nice. And uh, when he gets here, we'll go ahead and get it up in the air. Oh yeah, ignore the fact that my bike fell off of its stand. It literally fell off its stand. I caught it because I'm, I'm built different, you know? The bike fell off of its stand and I caught it. I caught it like a little baby bird falling from its nest. I saved it, not a scratch on it because of that fall. I don't know how I'm gonna fix that. Anyway, let's get started. Let's get started. All right, let's see what we have in our kit here. Move, bitch! I believe this is our charge pipe. I don't know. Turbo oh. pipe. Have some bushings. Look at that. Gorgeous. And then our coupling as well. And the best part about this kit is that it actually comes with all your clips. So you'll notice that it has all these clips. This is what it snaps into on the engine, I believe. Which is great because I think we definitely lost one of Laura's. You want to hear Captain? How to sir, good morning, good morning. The clamp is broken and that whole boot is broke. There is that sensor. We need to unplug that sensor. That vacuum line in the back too, we need to unplug. Ah, there we go. To get to everything, we gotta take off this, like, thing? Really, this whole panel? Got these clamps, you just kind of get up underneath them and tie them out. There we go. <coughs> Connect this one down here as well. There we go. Oh, that's cute. We got a little stash for drugs. In the videos that I've seen, I see people kind of just pulling this out of the way, like disconnecting it and kind yeah. of unclipping it and then moving it. It just pops right out. There's only two right here. I believe that these are just the only ones that we need to take out. And I believe the thing kind of slides out. Pull out these bolts here on both sides. And then it looks like there's these flaps. You pull these. How does that even work? It's loose. We just got to get it off these. Take them off. The little side plastics? Yeah. There and then a series of bolts here. Oh shit, it literally just clips in. Oh. Oh yeah, watch out. Oh, Laura. Oh. I shouldn't even blame Laura. These no, Atlanta roads. Tiny boy. Look what you're doing to my shop, Laura. I should uh, also look into getting her that upgraded intercooler. intercooler. Yeah, of all that plastic, you get rid of all that plastic. <gasps> it's bad ass. So right where the tip of the light is, there's a rubber grommet where the pipe just kind of 
pops into almost like an exhaust hanger. So we've got that popped out and now the thing's moving freely and we can pull it out from the bottom. Man, I can't imagine how it's gonna be getting this new one in. Feels like it's coming. We got her. Ladies and gentlemen, we All got right. him. Found the ring. We've been looking for that. Ugh. You see, that, that is no good. That is big not good. On the left. Okay. Ye this is the plastic side right here that I'm pointing at. Aha, uh -huh, I see it. Yeah, 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 I see it. Man, I don't know how we're gonna get that off. That's a bitch. No, once it's off, it's short. So I see that being easy. The other ring, once it's on, the, the new ones, they just literally clip in place. Clip in, yeah. So you know, it's not like we have to make sure that they're seated. I mean, you do, but it's not like that. All right. Very cool, Kanye. All right, let's get some lunch. All right, let's do that. And it comes with all the new hardware too. The only thing we gotta do is install that O-ring in here, which you just lube it up and put it in. Okay, 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 I see how this works. This is broken anyway too, but you just pop on this metal flange to here. That's gonna go there, and then these two, since this is for methanol injection, I believe, if I remember correctly, just bung those, because I don't think Laura's gonna run meth. <laughs> Imagine if I could convince, oh dude, that'd be oh, fucked up. If I just like converted it over to methanol injection, just didn't tell her. It's just like, yeah, she don't know. Maybe like an extra 100 horsepower. Go ahead and throw bigger turbos on it while we're at it. So this step down goes from here to there. That'll be good though. That'll give us a little bit more flexibility. It might be easier to get it on the car. You can use Teflon tape on these threads here. The vent hose for if you have an automatic transmission, you're gonna have this. If you have a manual transmission, this is gonna be a block off. Again, these are two bung holes for running methan injection, methanol injection, I believe. I, uh, I'm gonna leave these alone. I'm gonna plug them, obviously, but. Very intercooler, Kanye. This is the turbo pipe that's assembled, ready to go. And we have the charge pipe kind of half ready to go. We got the bungs in there with Teflon tape as well as that with Teflon tape. That's for your map sensor. We installed the O-ring in here and it already comes with the clips already on it, which is nice. These aren't made like no Chevys, man. You can't see shit in these bitches. Ah, oh, it's, I mean, it's close. You gotta push on a little bit more, but it's, you might need to rotate it a little bit till it seats. Oh, 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 it's so close. It's so close. Nice. Yeah, it's like, how the fuck is it supposed to fit? That's what I'm wondering. I'd say it might be better if we didn't break it. <laughs> we did, we, no, it, we didn't. We got it out without breaking it. It was already broken. All right, so we got the, the new charge pipe, the first half of it installed. We're gonna try to install the back half secondary and then tighten down this, uh, this clamp while it's on. It's just not a whole lot of room to work here. Yeah, cause right here's the end of the pipe. Ah, uh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I think we'll be able to hit that from far over here. So we got the intercooler back in place. We've got the piping. Did we tighten this side up? I think we did. There was almost no room in here. Get that math installed. Should be ready to test after that. See if everything's good to go. We've got the battery disconnected. We'll reconnect it. Hopefully the codes will be clear and we won't have any boost leaks. Hopefully everything's good. No codes. Sounds good. To turn it back on and again, please press the radio on and off switch. Put open, trunk open, remote control, place better some time of day, parking assistance. I think we're good. I think, I think we're good to go. Fantastic. Five hours. It took us five. Battery discharge start engine is probably because we disconnected the battery. BMW stuff. All right, we got a, we got a, everything put back together. There's no codes. Everything sounded good. It didn't sound like we had any boost leaks. Not that we could hear it, right? I, I don't know. But no codes, which is, that's fantastic. The only thing that we had was PDC failure, which apparently like once you disconnect the battery and put it back together, sometimes you get some stuff like that. So I think we're gonna, I'm gonna drive it around a little bit, see if that goes away and make sure everything is good before I give it back to Laura, but this thing should be good to go. That was definitely a dealer that She's did this. She's never had this changed anywhere else. No, this is, this is all, this has all been dealer certified used before. So one of the dealers, look at you. And you know what? It had to be Global Imports. They're the only people who have touched this car. So should we bought it at Global Imports? So someone drew dick and someone drew a smiley face on the, the bullpen. So someone over at Global Imports, I see you. Drawing dicks on my girlfriend's car. 
How very BMW certified of you. <laughs> All right, so we have our car cooling off now. It is a different day and I'm using a giant grenade that I cut with my plasma cutter as a microphone. After we got the install done, I sent Captain home. He did this whole install in incredible pain. When he was at work, he got hit in the face with a baseball, breaking the roof of his mouth, ended up losing a couple of teeth as well. And he did this whole install while dealing with that pain. So Captain, I cannot thank you enough for sticking through this. And he's always been there and always treated me with love and respect, so. But we finished the install on a Monday and it is now Friday. And the good news is that everything is good. Everything is still put together. There's no boost leaks. Everything seems to be running perfectly fine and it could be a placebo effect, but it does feel a little bit faster. The new stuff is clearly less restrictive. Seeing a couple of horsepower gains, there's no doubt in my mind that it does improve airflow. The turbo probably spools a little bit quicker. It's a very punchy car as it is. And I was telling Laura, I think this car would be great on the track. It's all wheel drive, it's turboed, it weighs nothing. So how about this? What do you guys, what do you guys want to see with this car? This, Laura's car doesn't get enough love on the channel. Would you like to see me take it to the track? Maybe install some go fast goodies? By the way, I don't need the safety glasses. I just put them on so I look and talk smarter. I am college educated. And that don't mean a fucking thing. Thing. But we're gonna finish this video up with an oil change. I'm not gonna do like a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to change your oil. It's more or less just you and me talking shit while I do it. It's been cooling off for over an hour now and it's still devil ball sack hot. So I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and do the oil change while it's hot. It is what it is. We got some Castrol Edge, uh, Euro Performance. This is BMW certified, BMW LL, BMW Long Life. I don't fucking know, it's ridiculous. He had that special rated oil. I mean, I guess you probably don't, but I treat Laura's car way more better than I more better much more better than i do my own car so did a lot of research and i ended up going with the 5w30 i think it's better for our weather and the climate here in, in her type of driving we got an oil filter which is you know another canister oil filter and uh because this is a euro car we have our adapter for the uh oil filter cap so all righty then simple oil change i did invest way too much time into uh <laughs> deciding what oil to go with it's it's actually kind of annoying how uh, how long I took with it. I just want to make sure I got her the right stuff. It's not like some Chevy or my Corvette where you can just basically throw canola oil in the thing and it'll run fine for a billion years. No, no, no. If you get the wrong flavor of oil, this thing's gonna throw codes. I believe this is a 17 millimeter. You know, if we go get this car's oil changed at Global Imports, which is pretty much the only BMW dealership locally to us, it's like fucking $200 almost. There we go. Once again, no oils on the dick beaters. Yeah, she needed an oil change. She's about 2,000 over. It is dark and murky, but not shiny, which is good. Let me go get my, I got a magnet somewhere. Good, we're not, we're not pulling any mass with the oil. The flow is still laminar. I mean, I ain't no oilologist or nothing like that, but you know, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The last, the last like week or so has been an absolute shit show. Just God, has it been busy. A lot of orders, which is not a complaint. I'm actually very excited for it, but the machine has had a lot of issues over the past, the past two weeks. And I've got it sorted out now, but seriously, for like, for about a week and a half, it was not wanting to cut, but I got them all cut. I do all my orders in batches. So I got it all powder coated, which I need to take home today so I can ship out over the weekend. So those are coming to you guys. I appreciate it. Some people have been waiting uh, longer than they should have, and that is my fault. Oh, but you know what, man? The giant grenade that I cut was actually a sign idea that I'd had. I figured I could put some lights behind that. People would like that. So comment, let me know if you want to see that on the website. But, but when I introduced the coat hangers, the metal coat hangers on my website, one of the biggest requests after that was plate carrier holders. So got my plate carrier and I designed some, uh, some hooks around it, you know, you can also flip it upside down and carry it like that. Holes, so if you need to hang other stuff off of it, you know, if you got like a utility bag or something you need to hang off of it, you can. But this was this was pretty heavily requested. By the time this video goes live, these should be available on the website with the other regular coat hangers. But here's the crazy thing, is that I think I actually have this priced cheaper than the plastic competitors. And I'm pretty sure that this will hold more weight than the plastic competitors as well. We know that one of my original coat hangers can hold right around 180 pounds by itself. I'm assuming that this one probably performs as well. Very cool, Kanye, very cool. Perfectplasma.co, get your plate carriers here, bruh. Excuse me, ma'am. What are your opinions on the social economic climate of the US right now? Uh-huh. And as a German, how would you like to see that changed? Now between you and me, 
and I keep this to yourselves, but I'm a tort to spec gal. I'm not an Ugga Dugga boy anymore. I'm a tort to spec queen now. Now I used to send things home with a couple of Ugga Duggas and call it good. Not the drain plug. The drain bolt in the oil filter is 18 newton meters of torque or somewhere around 25 foot pounds. Over a little, little cinch. Hear that? Yeah, that feels good. I'm happy with that. I don't even want to talk about the way I had to get this thing in the air. The, the lift points are like literally maybe three feet apart from each other. It's crazy. This car is so small. Also, I have to pee, so you're going to have to listen to it. You know, my favorite thing about BMWs is that they're fucking weird and you got to pull them twice. You know? Does this fit? Oh, thank God. I can provide a link for everything in the description if you guys want, if you guys want any of this stuff that I'm using here. I mean, obviously the charge pipe and the turbo pipe are linked, but you know, while I'm here, everything looks good down here. No blow by on any oil that I can tell. Well, one of the things that I really wish American cars would do are these top side oil filters. I know I was talking shit about the, the oil filters being, um, you know, plastic or whatever, but I mean like, being up here is convenient. A lot of people replace these with metal ones. I'm not gonna do that, at least not right now, maybe in the future. You know what? Maybe it's a vacuum thing. I'm gonna lift it back up and, and see if I can drain any more oil out of here. That might be a thing. Yeah, there was there was a little bit left. It, I'm, I'm, I'm happy I did it, I guess. I, I know, man, my shop is uh, an absolute mess right now. Uh, it's almost time for a great reset. Uh, which is basically where I pull everything out, clean the whole shop, and put everything back together again. That's usually something you guys really like to watch, um, a cleaning video. So, all right, so we went ahead and pulled the old oil filter out. We got the new oil filter here, and it's got, or it should anyway, have your oil filter and two O-rings. Perfect. Oh, shit. Is that really? Crush washer. Very cool. Got an O-ring around here. We're just going to use a pick. You can use whatever you want to get this up. Small screwdriver, your hands, but picks are easy. Pick up, roll them off. I'm going to set this to the side. You never know if you're going to need it if you fuck up the new one. And then also there's a small one up top of the neck here that, come on, you bitch. Don't fight me. Accept your fate. You're coming off. Dip me finger in some of our new oil and lubricate our new O-ring. Nice and sexy. You might need to speak sweet nothings into it. Stretch her and pop her on, giggity. And same thing to our new up top one. Now there are no markings on either side of this oil filter. It looks to be constructed in the exact same way, both front and back. We're just gonna pop her on there. Ready to go back in the car, man. Super easy. Don't feel any binding or girding. I'm just gonna do it until it's and. This is also a 25 newton meter, 18 foot pounds. That feels good. All right, that's gonna be a bitch. All right, so here's the thing. If your oil filter wrench gets stuck on your oil filter cap, we're gonna need very precision tools to get this off. So I got a bit of wood here and I'm just gonna. There we go. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I, I almost made a huge mistake. I forgot the crush washer, which would have been embarrassing. I can't believe I did that. Thankfully I did that before I filled the oil. Oil that I had to order, by the way. I couldn't just go down to AutoZone or Advance. They didn't have it. Never forget your crush washers. I can't believe I almost did that, dude. Fucking stupid. That is a good torque setting for that. Letting her down for the third and final time. 6.9 quarts which we have. I, yeah. I, there's a lot of different oils you can use with this car. 0W40, 0W30, 5W30, um, 5W40, I think. There, there's a whole list and don't take anything that I say as guaranteed, right? I highly suggest you do your own research. As a matter of fact, I applaud you doing your own research. <clears throat> the important thing here for this right here is this, the BMW Long Life 01. Uh, BMW LL01. There's a couple different ratings, A3, B4. Just recommend looking into it because there's a lot that goes into this shit. You know, one time when I was in high school, I was an auto shop apprentice. And one time, one of the kids who was also in auto shop, we were doing an oil change on a teacher's car and he tried to fill the oil back in the car via the dipstick, which uh, you do that with transmissions on some cars. 
but not oil. Needless to say, about five and a half quarts of oil went all over the floor, brand new oil, and we all made fun of them. All right, everything looks clean up here. That's closed. Now we should uh, hop in the car and check our oil level. Because you don't have a dipstick on this car, you have a mechanical dipstick. All right. That hood's open. Let it run for a second. Vehicle info, maybe? Oh, and now we got to get the operating temperature. Very cool. The operating temp, we're going to start measurement. Would it tell me, like, how much I'm off by? Would it be like, yo, you need to add like a half a quart you need to, or, or a liter or whatever the Germans? Listen, all I'm saying is there's two different types of countries, all right? There's countries that use the metric system. There's countries that have been to the moon. I don't write the rules, all right? And yes, you can say things like, we got there using German scientist operation paperclip. It doesn't matter. Winning's winning. Some people are gonna say NASA uses the metric system. Yeah, sure, now they do, but guess what put a man on the moon? Imperial, US Imperial did. Yes, there were parts on the ship that were made in metric, that is true. And yes, while some of the ship was made in metric, all of the controls that landed the actual craft on the moon, piloted by the pilots, were in US Imperial. Which means inches, miles, football fields got us on the moon. Checkmate, atheists. All right, checkmate, liberals. Ooh, look at that. Engine oil, okay. Fantastic. Now, how do we reset this? In time for real mechanic moments, Googling how to reset stuff. Reset oil light BMW M235i. Okay, the trip odometer reset button on the left side of the dash. Right there. Press and hold this button to access the service menus. Fantastical. All right, realistically, the only thing that she needs now is brake fluid. I'm not gonna be the one to do that. I'm gonna leave that one to the professionals. I'm not gonna be the reason that Laura uh, loses brake pressure. I'll never hear the end of it, assuming that she would make it. That's it, we're good to go. Let's back it on out of here. No oil leaking, that's a, that's a really good sign. Good, good, go me. All right, and there you have it. We replaced Laura's charge pipe and her turbo pipe, as well as giving her an oil change all for uh, $80 all together. Man, honestly, this could have been really bad had we not have found this in time. I can't believe it got this bad. But see, the problem is this, is this is where all your air goes through to go to your turbos, right? And it's hot. So they make these plastic pieces of shit from BMW that fail after like 30, 40,000 miles. I don't know why they do it other than revenue. But the metal ones are so much nicer. It's, it certainly seems to be quicker. I'd like to do the intercooler upgrade in the future, but at the same time, I also don't wanna fucking do that again. Like it wasn't a bad install. I see people do this without a lift too. I can't imagine doing this without a lift, doing this. I, the videos that I watched, there's people doing it uh, in their driveway on jack stands. Good luck to you. I'd give this one probably, I'd give it a five. Just because there's no room, man. I suppose if you don't have X drive, I assume if you don't have that, it's a lot easier. Um, but there's just no room. That's the only part that made it hard was that there's no room to finagle those parts. You gotta really, I mean, you gotta get it right, but we got it done. And it took us about, I think, I think four or five hours to do it all together. And that's from start to finish from in, including dicking around and, and eating food. And, but like I said, man, it was really cool for ECS to send this out. Really appreciate it. You had the parts out quick, awesome to work with. I look forward to working with you guys more in the future. And uh, as for the viewers, what do, you, what do you think we can do to Laura's car to make it more car-ish? I'm thinking something like an exhaust, maybe uh, an intake, an intercooler, an intercooler upgrade, stuff like that. Tell me what you guys think. Because uh, I'd like to feature the car more. I mean, it's a, it's a cool car. It's a really cool car. I'd love to feature this thing more often. But all right, guys, that is going to end it for today's video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Also, thank you guys so much for the orders. This is about an average of two weeks worth of orders. I don't know, maybe almost 100 hangers specifically. Maybe 30 or so coat hangers, 50 to 100 license plate frames, a handful of keychains, and some key hangers. Not as many signs this order, but we did get some, some chrome, a, a small wheelie art, and a small just work sign. So heavy on the hangers, heavy on the, on the plate covers this week. I am also lowering some of my prices. A combination of two different things, and this is just for the end of the video. Combination of two different things. A, I've got better cut settings. I figured out my machine where I can cut a little bit more effectively, uh, saving me a lot of time and money and consumables, as well as I've gotten better rates on metal now. I was at this rate for metal. I'm at this rate for metal, so I get metal cheaper now. I could, as a business owner, continue my prices at where they are, but the best part about saving money on my end is that you guys get to save money on your end, so uh, that will affect mostly larger items, mostly larger items. The small stuff is, is priced pretty much where it can be priced, 
but like the big signs, I can, I can kind of cut the price on those a little bit because I've got a better process now. That's a little bit of clarity between me and you. I think a lot of business owners would probably keep their prices the way they are when they find something new to save them more money. I can reduce my prices. And right now you can still use the coupon code do with Dan and get 10% off the entire website. So much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for the love and support with the business stuff. It keeps growing. I keep doing it. I keep learning. It's a lot, man. It's a lot, but um, I am, I'm very appreciative of all the love and support you guys have given me. And uh, yeah, goodbye. It's everybody's favorite. It's do it dance favorite time. It's time to, time to make intros. Time to, time to or do intro stuff. I fucking love making intros so much. They're the best. They're so much fun to do. You have to sit there and grab your attention for the next couple of minutes. He loves making intros. It's his, the best time of every video. He's like, intros are so much fun. It's where you get to summarize what you're going to hopefully do in today's video and it's going to go terribly wrong like it always does. No way.